Hi, in this video we will go about reviewing chapter 4 which is all about comments. How to write great comments. Before we get into it, let's look at when one should not write comments. So there are many places uh, and scenarios where you should not write comments. Um, so first and foremost was you should not write comments to explain the code because the code should be simple enough that the developer reading the code should understand it without having to read the comments. By that, you're also doing one very important thing. You're maintaining one source of truth of what the function does in the code. You're not adding a comment that describes what the function does and encoding all of that explanation into your comment and also writing that code. So you have one source of truth on what's happening in that method. So do not explain the code. Um, the code should explain itself, right? The second thing where we should think really hard of uh, not adding comments is around change logs. Now that we have Git and SVN, source control management systems, the change logs are captured in much detail and you don't have to uh, muddy your code with the change log as to who did what change when. It's all captured. And even attributions is now questionable, like because a lot of code is now collaborative. A lot of people contribute code. So if you have an author, maybe it helps, but maybe not because a lot of people contribute and things change over time. Maybe the author no longer uh, works or maintains on that code, right? So probably not a good idea for maintaining change logs in comments or even attributions. Position markers indicating uh, certain functions being private, certain functions uh, being public. That's also very difficult to maintain. So position markers we should avoid and avoid uh, ending braces comments like uh, this is the end of the for loop, this is the end of the while loop. Uh, so if you end up doing that, then it's very hard to first of all understand that your code is modular like most likely you will do that because your functions are big and so you might want to refactor instead of uh, adding comments so every time you end up writing comments think step back and think can you use that time instead of adding a comment to refactor that code and maybe make it simpler to understand the method name more intuitive the parameter names and more intuitive the function size smaller so that it's easier. So refactoring is way better than adding comments. And you should only add comments when you think it's very difficult to um, explain what the code is doing and it's hard to understand the code, right? Also avoid adding any mumblings or frustrations that you have while coding into your code. And uh, definitely avoid misleading or wrong comments. If you do a poor job writing a comment that doesn't accurately describe your function, then the user of your method or your API would be misled into not using your APIs correctly. So wrong comments are very bad. Confusing comments that, you know, comment, you need a comment to explain your comment or it's not, that's not good. So avoid confusing comments. And also think hard if all private APIs need comments. I feel we should not have comments uh, for methods that don't need any special value or don't need any special detail added to it. So avoid private API comments uh, and think hard if you need to add. And also avoid adding too much detail into your comments that, that is not necessary and not relevant. So add comments if you have to. Um, but if you do um, add them only as much detail as you need. So now let's look at when, what are some of the good use cases of adding comments? After reading this chapter, one key thing that I realized was that you don't have to add comments for every method. Your methods need to be intuitive, your uh, parameters need to be intuitive. But if it, let's say it's very hard for someone who's reading the code then you should maybe consider adding a comment. Um, but there are three or four reasons where comments do a pretty good job. So let's look at them. So if you have private APIs, we, we went over that. But if you have public APIs, then it's, it's a very good idea to maintain um, documentation so that 
your library users can use your methods without having to download all of your code and understand. Uh, but when you do add documentation, then it's very, very important to make sure that the description of the method is very accurate. If it's not, then it's very bad. So public APIs deserve good comments. Um, another three things that I found in this book was if you want to reveal intent as to what is the intention of writing this code, what was the what was the developer's thought process when they wrote this software, or what was the rationale and some of the decision making process of choosing certain algorithm versus others, and what was the justification like on certain approaches taken into your software that you wrote, right? So, writing comments about intention rationale or decisions that are made why certain decisions were made and even the justification that supports some of those decisions are the best use cases of writing comments and even you can use comments to caution or amplify like let's say certain tests take way too long but there are better ways uh, with ignoring certain tests but if you want to caution a developer that certain api is way too slow or the performance is very poor so use it with caution so Comments could be very handy if you want to caution um, the developer as to why you're using a set versus a list and uh, why certain methods was not preferred, right? So cautioning and amplifying some of those decisions and explaining the why is, is, uh, is the area where comments do pretty good. But if you explain the how, then that's for the code to tell, not for the comment. So this was the key insight, like not all methods need comments. You need comments if uh, it's very difficult to understand the code and you've tried your best to refactor your code, but it's still hard. So then maybe that's a good, good idea for a comment. And then again, explaining the why, which is around the intention, the rationale, or the justification. It's probably the only reason where comments can be very helpful. One thing to think about, should you enforce comments uh, when you do your code reviews for every methods? Probably not. I, when I started this, before I started this, uh, reading this chapter, I, I had this view that all methods should be commented, every detail should, should uh, be explained uh, in a comment, but now I don't feel that way. I feel that if you write good code, if you write smaller functions, if you use the right function names, if you use the right set of parameters, that it should be evident and that only maybe public APIs and intentions uh, and rationales are the right places for comments. Only if you add value to the function, para function method signature that's not evident by reading that method signature, then you should consider adding comments. What do you all think? What do you enforce in your organization? Write in comments section below. I'd like to hear uh, what you think. Thanks.